Okay, are we ready to go then? Yep. All right, y'all, welcome to our information session. It is a weird time, but it's good that you're all here <laughs> and that we can still do this. Okay, so what we are gonna talk about today, we're gonna have a brief overview. Um, you can flip forward. Do you want me just to like, ding? <laughs> you want that yeah. sound, Janet? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you when I'm sharing my screen, so yes. <laughs> okay, like a cute little book. Ding, you can go forward. Um, so this is an overview of what we are going to um, expect of you once you have gone through your defense. Um, so this is about post-defense paperwork, and then this will also be about um, reviewing um, from the grad school, all of that good stuff. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> okay, so if you are a plan student, you are actually don't necessarily need to be on this meeting because um, the School of Graduate Studies does not review master plan B papers. So if you want to disappear, now is the time to do it. Um, formatting of a plan B paper is between you and your major professor and the department. So that's why we don't we don't review it on my end. <laughs> okay, so the main thing that I want you guys to take from this today is that paperwork is important and planning ahead is extremely important because uh, we find that a lot of students get really, really excited and rightfully so um, that they have passed their defense and they're on that I've defended and I was successful high. Um, but we need to remember that there is more to do after the defense, okay? So on our SGS website, we do have a timeline that you can go and play with depending on if you're a master's student or um, a doctoral candidate. Okay, so on this timeline, every time it's pulled up on the screen here, just as a screenshot, but if you roll over each of the sections, it's going to give you um, a suggestion on when you should Fill out this form and submit it. Work with your graduate program coordinator. We call them GPCs, so I'll probably use that acronym from on. But work with your GPC to make sure that you get all of this paperwork filled in. Is that my ding? That's the ding. <laughs> okay. Sorry, are they getting audio? I got distracted and read the form. Working on that? We have some people joining and leaving at the same time if that's happening, so. All right, no worries then. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of your defense semester. You're writing and rewriting your paper with your committee. You finally defend, you're successful, we're very happy about that. Um, usually your committee will give you some final edits that they want you to do to the academic content of your paper. And now is where the paperwork comes in for grad school with me, okay? So the answer is the first thing that you are going to want to talk about is a format and style form. Shannon? <laughs> Got it. Uh, maybe. Here we go. Okay. So all of our forms have currently been moved on to ServiceNow. Um, ServiceNow is edu. On the screen, you'll see that we circled it. That's where you're going to click in to find these forms. So if we click on that, Shannon will be So you're gonna find this one. It says graduate studies. That's where we harbor all of our forms just in that link. So we'll click on that. And then you're gonna go to degree requirements. Sorry, I feel like I'm going fast, but there we go. Hmm. And then we'll find the format and style form on that page. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the format and style form. <laughs> okay, so format and style form. The reason that we have you fill this out is because we wanna know what citation style guide that you have been using on your paper. Uh, while writing your paper, you need to have a citation style guide or a formatting manual, or um, some people use an academic journal. Um, sorry, Shannon. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> no, I'm like, 
Wait, I've had my scripts in front of me. Um, so your citation style manual is contingent on your academic discipline. Um, and our most popular ones that we see here at Utah State are APA, MLA, IEEE, LaTeX, Chicago, or whatever journal you choose to want uh, to write your paper in. So I see a lot of um, the Journal of Dairy Science or something like that. So if you have a specific publication that you're shooting for, we really like that. We want you to be published and, and known into the universe. So that makes us happy, okay? Thank you. Okay, it's a little small on my screen. But what you're seeing here is the format and style form when you pull it on up on service now. Your information should actually auto generate from banner. So if any of your information is correct incorrect when it generates on your screen, it needs to be switched in banner. Okay. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it's all correct. Um, so it will pull up your name, your A number, your email, your department, um, college, your program, um, and then it will actually have you sign it. Um, just to acknowledge that that information is correct. Okay, so very, very simple first part of the form. It's just, you need to know yourself, so. <laughs> okay, let's move forward on that one. Okay, so in the next part of the form, you are going to be choosing a monograph or multiple style of your paper, okay? Monograph format is a traditional format that we use. It consists of multiple chapters, but it's the same style throughout the entire paper. So if you wrote your entire paper in APA, monograph format, right? Um, multiple paper format is when you've written multiple chapters and they actually use um, different citation style guides. So one chapter could be in APA, one could be in MLA. It doesn't matter. We just need to know what is the breakdown of those chapters, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like on the form. You're going to just select, select one of the two options, okay? Um, the first one we're gonna show you is monograph format. All right, monograph format, if you select this box, the only thing that pops up is this little section right here that says, I have written my paper in and you write the citation, st uh, citation style manual that you have chosen. All right, so very simple. If you choose multiple paper format, okay, this is where you're going to have boxes generate where you can say your citation style guide for chapter one, and then you can say if it published, if you have co-authors, um, we would like to know that. Um, and then it actually says add next chapter, and you can click that and you can add as many chapters as you need to cover for your paper. Um, the end of the form is actually, uh, it pertains to what Shannon does over at the library, which is um, digital common consent. So we have here where it says, I would like to, or sorry, let me back up. I need to look. Um, you'll write the title of your thesis dissertation. You'll have um, keywords. You like to add keywords so your paper becomes searchable in that repository. So make sure you have the keywords with commas, okay? And then read this and it will say, I acknowledge that I am uploading into Digital Commons and click that student agreement. Shannon is going to talk a little bit more about this, but we also have a section where there is info. So, okay. you, you too. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I just had people come in. <laughs> so, if you click on the embargo, Shannon is going to actually talk about that more. There we go. Okay, they're leaving. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> uh, then we also have a section specifically for creative writing students. Okay, so um, creative writers, they embargo indefinitely. Um, all other students embargo for a five-year time period. But like I said, Shannon is going to get into this later on in this presentation, so we won't spend too much time on so, Okay, and the very end of the paper is actually just your advisor or major professor signing off. We also have a section that says reviewer, if not GPC. 
some departments have department reviewers, or you can have the option of maybe hiring um, an editor. Uh, a really popular one on campus is Mary Ellen Heiner. She appears there a lot. Um, there's one in the sciences that's Haley Seiler. So just be aware that your department might have a department reviewer for you, okay? All right, go forth. <laughs> Okay, the next form that you are going to fill out is your authorship and copyright form. Like I said in the format and style form, the front of that form is just your information generating from Banner. Okay, so make sure that's all correct. Sign off on it. Okay. There we go. All right, so the first thing the authorship and copyright form talks about is your data. All right, so you have some options on what you want to select for your data. I'm sorry, this is really little on my screen, so I'll get a little closer. But it says, the data for part or all of my thesis dissertation have not been collected under financial uh, or other sponsorship and are my property. So that's your Or you can select the data for part or all of my dissertation collected under financial sponsorship and were made available to me and are not my property. Um, then it will, generate these boxes below to say who owns that data okay so you can write in if you were funded by nhs or something like that okay um and then you'll have your advisor your major professor or if you have a pi you can put in their name as well okay let's talk about authorship okay so you have some options here. Based on discussion with my committee, contributions of my thesis dissertation will be acknowledged as follows. I will be the sole author. I will be the sole author, but I will have acknowledgement of assistance of your authors in a footnote or a preface. And then you can actually um, write in who the authors are in that box, okay? Or I will co-author publications or abstracts based on my thesis dissertation and you'll want to write the order of authorship. If you have, some people have like 20 authors, we need your top five, your top five authors listed. Okay, so don't feel like you have to fill in all 20 names and get all 20 permissions. Let's just get the, the base going on there, okay? If you have some other, we like to just leave that open. So if you want an other box, you can check that and specify, okay? Um, some of you will have a time limit with your major professor. You need to discuss that with them if they want to see a draft of your publication by a certain date. Pick that together and select that box, okay? All right, and then you'll have your supervisory committee approval, and this is just your committee members. I'm not 100% sure if this auto generates yet. We are working on that, but um, it might still be in the works. So if you have to audit, you have to actually manually put in your um, committee members, I'm sorry, but you can do it. <laughs> I have faith in you. I have right. faith in them too, Erica. <laughs> All right, like you can type, we're cool. <laughs> okay, All right, let's go forward. All right, the next thing that I need to see is a title page. You have some options on your title page. You can have it hand signed by your committee members. If you go that option, you will need to um, have your GPC scan that in and send it to me once that's signed. Or the more popular option, we can send it out for electronic signatures, okay? That comes through me. You'll give the blank copy to your GPC. GPC sends it to me. I send it out through Adobe Sign. So that's an option as well, okay? I do wanna point out on your title page, we are pretty specific on how we want it formatted, so be aware of that. Um, we have it like double spaced, as you can see. Um, the title is in an inverted pyramid, so it looks like that, okay? We, we check on that. Um, and then I find that it's kind of been optional lately as to whether you put your degree on the degree on the committee members it's kind of up to you and your committee if they want to be known as a phd make sure that you let them have their phd um but the phd is required on our vice provost so richard s noa phd vice provost for graduate studies that needs to be the 
staple there, okay? Um, and then I'm still getting title pages from 2019, so just make sure you update to 2020. Come into the new year, even though it's kind of been a weird one. <laughs> so make sure that that's updated, okay? Maybe they don't want to update to No, they're like, I, I would be proud. We survived March, okay? So <laughs> let's go forward. Sorry, that was a terrible joke. I apologize. I liked it. <laughs> Why we're friends. Okay. So um, we also offer a USU publication guide to help you with your front matter. What is your front matter? We will talk about it in just one second. That's a weird word. But um, just know that on the grad school website, we do have the publication guide and we have a word template. The word template will help you format your title page, okay? Um, and how many signatures you need. Some of you have five committee members, some have four. So there's some different looks to those, okay? But just know that the publication guide, which we'll talk about right now, um, will cover your front matter pretty much only, all right? Go forward, Shannon, and see if this next one is. Can you go forward one more? Let's see. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Yes, good. That's perfect. Okay, so um, I'm going to back up for just one second. Your format and style form, once that comes back in completed, it all comes to me and I will file it in a box folder for you. Um, the people that have access to this box folder, um, they're going to be you as a viewer. Your major professor will be a viewer. And then the PC or department reviewer will have uploader rights. So technically you don't have rights to upload to your box, but you have rights to view your box, okay? The things that I will look for before I do a review, um, I'm going to look for the format and style, authorship and copyright, your title page, and your paper. Once that is all set in place, you are queued up to go through my review um, as the SGS editor, okay? What I'm looking for is your front matter making sure it looks nice and then the bones of your paper to check for your format or for your citation styling okay so what i am looking for in your paper which will be covered by the publication guide you'll have a title page you'll have a copyright page you might not have a copyright page. you do not own your research that's okay you'll have an abstract we ask that it be 350 words max and your audience towards that abstract is a knowledgeable ad, um, knowledgeable audience, okay? The public abstract um, is 350 words as well, but the audience is the public because it's used by the library. This is what will appear in Digital Commons. We are a land-grant institution, so we make sure that we keep it open to the public, okay? Um, your optional sections, a dedication, tell your mom thank you, and your dad thank you for, for supporting you. Right? Or your spouse. That's a big one, too. Um, a frontispiece. I, ha I haven't seen many of these, but if you would like a picture um, ushering in your thesis, that's good. Um, acknowledgements. Like I said, be grateful to all of those that have going back. Thank you for muting your mic. We appreciate it. There's much background noise, I think, is all. Okay. All right. So let's see where we got acknowledgements. Okay. Um, the next part will be your contents. Um, we just call it contents. We don't label it as table of contents. Um, and then we have your list of tables, list of figures, if those are applicable. Um, and like I said, I look at the bones of your paper. I don't necessarily look at the content of your paper because I don't have that degree. So I'm going to look more for your spelling, your grammar. Um, I'm not going to touch any of that content, okay? Um, the next thing is, uh, for every doctoral candidate, we require a curriculum vitae. So make sure that you attach that at the end of your paper if you are a doctoral candidate. All right. Okay. So let's talk about my review process. Once you get your paper, I'm actually going to run a very quick spell checker on it. Okay. Um, I will send it back to the student if it is obvious that it hasn't been, been spell checked. All right. Um, then I will run the paper through turnitin.com. 
And that is our plagiarism website where we just check and see, um, make sure that it hasn't plagiarized. Honestly, I would say the average percentage that I received back is 30 to 40% plagiarized. And that's because it's just flagging the citations in your paper. So we don't necessarily, um, we don't necessarily flag that or, or worry about that. So if you have a high percentage, just know that it's not going to be a problem, okay? Um, all right, so once we do that, if you need annotations on your paper, um, I will send it back to you through an email. It actually goes to your GPC, all right? So the GPC receives the email, um, but the student will be CC'd on it saying, we need a correction, um, an edit of your paper, okay? Or maybe you don't need any sort of corrections at all, which would be great, <laughs> okay? And if you do that, you have um, an email that says, congratulations, your paper will be approved and signed by the vice provost, which I do. Um, then I send your paper along to the library to be uploaded into Digital Commons or ProQuest, as long as there's not embargo. All right. Um, and then uh, once your paper has been processed, the library will actually email you saying that it has been processed. Shannon, how long does that process usually take? It's only like what? a day or two to process the paper into digital commons um that it's been uploaded i yeah. it, i'm not i i would give it more like a a, a week okay so i'm like, sure it's generally faster um but yeah yeah it, i just want to kind of get on all the other stuff we have going on but i know these are always a high priority for us so okay i was about to say i'm like i feel like y'all are Pretty fast. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not actually the one doing the uploading. So, um, yes, Rebecca, yeah. there's there's a whole team of people that make that happen. That, that should be a comfort to the students. You have a team working for you. Okay, okay. So once your paper has been finalized by the library, it is locked from further editing. And I would like to reiterate that it is locked from further editing. Okay. Yes, I would like to reiterate that too. We've had some emails recently. Yes. Um, so make sure your name is spelled correctly. That has happened. We have had someone that said, my name isn't correct. You guys got the wrong middle initial. And we said, we're sorry you wrote the paper. <laughs> so, <laughs> you should know yourself. Okay. So just make sure, make sure that you are 100% okay with what we are submitting. All right. If we need to stop, we can stop, but just make sure it's not locked in. All right. Okay. Oh, next. I was trying to do it. <laughs> I have no control. <laughs> you, you're like, you're jumping around. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, let's talk about who can help you on your paper. All right. If you need help with writing, uh, we have writing.usu.edu. That is our um, department that specifically helps you in your writing right now in these times, they are 100% online, but you can still set up an online session. Okay, like I said, you might have a department reviewer um, at, that's specific to your department. Go and see if you have one. Um, maybe you have a grad friend that's really nice and would read your paper or like a friend friend <laughs> that could read your paper. Or we also say a family member that loves you and maybe understands what you're talking about. They might not but they should be able to get the basic gist of, of uh, your paper, right? Um, and then over here on the screen, we do have some freelance editors available to you on campus. That is um, coming out of your own pocket. So if you did choose to do that, you would be paying um, for those services, all right? Shannon, did I miss anything? I think it's Bali. They next find you. this information at writing.usu.edu, correct? Yeah, the freelance editors, that's available on the writing website. Yep. Okay. I think that's everything. I think it oh, is. Oh, it's me. <laughs> Yay, I get a break. <laughs> you too. Okay, 
So um, Erica mentioned that USU is, is a land grant university. Part of our goal is to um, make the research and scholarship of the university as much as possible um, open to the public. And um, I don't think we ever introduced ourselves. So I'm Shannon Smith. I'm the scholarly communication librarian at the libraries. And um, that work of helping to make scholarship and research at the university open to the public is part of my um, responsibilities. So I oversee Digital Commons, which is USU's institutional repository. And this is where the libraries work to promote and maintain that scholarly output of the university. You've maybe seen this before. Um, it looks like this. Um, I'm gonna see if I can share something else successfully without this being a big thing, but we'll see. Okay, let's go, oh, wrong one, apologies. You did not want that. Let me get this side, okay. So this is what Digital Commons looks like live. Um, I started this website, opened it right before we started our session today. Um, it does give you live downloads as it's going through. So since about 115, we've had 432 live downloads around the world um, from content in Digital Commons, um, which is a really powerful motivator for why you might want um, to put your research and scholarship out there to the world. It increases your impact, um, really shows how others are engaging with your work. You'll get access to a dashboard to see where your downloads are coming from and how many you're getting. Um, and you'll have that online presence to add to your CV or any of your professional social networking sites. Um, and then something to know is all of our ETDs are our most frequently downloaded um, items and remain in the top 10 downloads generally. Currently, um, it's at number three. It's usually at number one. So we, these two have been getting a lot more downloads recently. But this particular one has been um, in the top downloads for quite some time. Um, and this is the download number since 2011 for this item. Um, and what's really cool about that is it doesn't necessarily prevent you from publishing other places or doing other things with this work. Um, Coulter has done several other articles off of his research from his project here. And um, so it's really cool to kind of see how that plays out over time. And then we'll go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, that was relatively painless. <laughs> Could have been worse. Okay. <clears throat> Oop. Sorry about that. Okay, if you have any questions about Digital Commons too, um, you just want to email digitalcommons at usu.edu as you go through the process. Um, so good news is it's now the same form. Erica went over that. All the things we need for Digital Commons are in that electronic publication approval form that you fill out for the grad school too. Um, so it's all part of that one stop shopping in that form. The sooner you do it, the better it is for you. That planning ahead is great, especially in our current circumstances. I think um, your your thesis and dissertation will be deposited deposited in digital commons. We will notify Erica when it's ready to go. And that is your last step to graduation. Um, we don't consider you graduated until we have a record of that work in the library. <laughs> Um, okay, so to embargo or not to embargo, this is kind of um, where the questions always are. In most cases, we want you to know an embargo is not necessary. If in doubt, we like you to visit with your advisor to make sure you guys are having that conversation because there's probably a lot of things about your work that I don't understand. Um, circumstances to consider embargoing with are if you plan to file a patent on your research, you are supported by an external source and it is subject to review prior to any sort of publication, um, or if you intend to publish, but and the publisher in a very rare circumstances considers deposit of your thesis or dissertation into a repository prior publication. Most publishers do not. Um, so if you have any questions, if you have any questions on that, you can just email digitalcommons at usu.edu and we'll try to help you figure that out. 
Um, cons of an embargo, so we gave you all the reasons that you probably don't need to, um, are just be aware you lose that loss of impact, you lose your online presence. Um, one thing I forgot to say with digital commons that those keywords you're inputting into that form that Eric talked about help build your metadata for searching in digital commons and Google and popular search engines are actually scraping all of that metadata from digital commons every few days. That's how most people enter and find the work that we host on digital commons is through popular search engines. So that is where all those downloads are coming from. Um, people searching, doing their research, just like all of you through those platforms. Um, so another con is ensuring the library has a hard copy of your work. Um, that <laughs> generally is a $20 binding fee and all of those things. Um, we recognize that we are in unusual circumstances right now. So if you end up in that situation, just email digitalcommons at usu.edu and we will work with you to make probably your digital copy work for right now. Um, so just again, email those questions and we'll figure it out. The last thing I really like to do is to make sure that you guys all the libraries are here to support you. The Angie's question for yes. here of what is an embargo? <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> I lost my chat window in all the changing of sharing. Okay, oh, you're good. So an embargo um, puts a lock on your research for uh, five years. We cannot control the time frame, so it's saying that. Um, we would we would still create a record for it. it would go up on digital commons in that way, but nobody can view it. Anything about your research for five years. Um, so it just, it, it means that you have said, I don't want anybody to be able to access this because I plan to do other things with it that will be impacted if people have access to that work. Um, at the end of five years, if you want to maintain an embargo, it would be another five years. So again, we have no control over the timeline. Um, it's just five years at a time. Does that help? Great. I'm, hey, it's popping up in my corner. That's new. Okay. Um, so the last thing, again, is I just want to make sure that you guys all know that the libraries are really here to support you in this process. We want you to graduate. We want to help um, promote your re research out there to the world and help you become um, the future researchers and scholars. Um, so we, if you aren't aware, you do have a subject specialist, a liaison librarian for your departments, and you can find that on our website. Um, we are all still checking everything right now, so you have us even virtually. Um, we have citation management tool experts that you can find on this library guide, libguides.usu.edu forward slash organizers. And then you have me, um, and my email will be on the next slide as well. You can email digitalcommons at usu.edu for any questions about this kind of stuff, or you can email me directly. And if I'm not the right person, I'll um, push you out to who is. Like, like we said earlier, you kind of have a team working for you at the libraries to help make you successful through this process. Okay, so this is um, my contact information and Erica's contact information. I'll leave it up here for a second, and then I will actually stop screen sharing so that we can just see each other's faces while you have questions. Did I forget anything, Erica? <laughs> no. Are we able to pull up the documents showing, like, do you remember when we, what we um, send out to people or, like, with the handout that we have? Are we able to show them that? Uh, yeah, if you can tell me where I need to go, sure. It would be in the box. It would be where we get the slides from. Okay, let me see if I can pull it up before I share it. <laughs> and you guys can kind of marinate on your questions. Like this is a fire hydrant of information. Like, so. Yeah, and you can start asking questions now. Most of them are probably things Erica can answer, so. I'm gonna mute so you don't hear them all my clicking in. Fine. Leslie, I can't answer what the, I don't know that one. <laughs> I have a baby here too, so I'm wrong. <laughs> Do 
Great question, Max. Okay. So once you have defended, you actually have something what we call a grace semester. Um, so let's say you defend in the spring, you actually have the entire summer um, to submit your paper with no fee or penalty to you. Um, so it's going to correspond if you defend in the summer, gray semester is fall. Defend in the fall, gray semester is spring. It's always just that semester after where you actually have an entire semester to fi finalize all your work. Um, it's our gift to you. <laughs> so um, just make sure that you get it by that date. After you go past your grace semester, that's where the college is gonna start charging you money. It's gonna be $100 for every semester you've gone past your grace semester, okay? So don't go past, we don't want you to lose any money. Um, I do have the box folder ready if you want to show any of that, Erica. You can just tell me what to click on. This is gonna help Leslie's question. Okay. Hold on, I'll share. Mm -hmm. Tyson, if a student defends, we want it to reflect the date that it is um, sent into the library. So right now we're operating in the 2020. Okay, Wait, remind me which ones they are though. Okay, um, let me look. Is it this one? NA theses um, it's the word documents the MSA checklist or the okay. PH checklist do you see those yep this will help you Stuart as well this will cover Stuart and Leslie's I'm not 100% sure what um what degree you guys are getting okay so right now we're just going to show you the thesis one and then we'll show you the doctoral candidate form okay this is something we could even send out to you we have that option um I think I'll make a PDF of the slides too, and we can send those out as well. Yeah, so we can send all this to you. Okay, so this is a little timeline that we've actually created um, just to kind of show you when you should be submitting your paperwork. I'm assuming most of you are in your defense semester, so we're going to kind of scroll down a little bit more to that. Okay, so if you look at this, sorry, <laughs> it's moving. Okay. Um, for your appointment for exam, this is to set up your defense. I'm just going to take it from there and then move on forward, okay? So your appointment for exam or your AFE form, we require that it be 10 business days before your defense. If you do not submit your AFE before then, um, or if you're in that, that window, right, you're going to have to petition the vice provost to defend, okay? So that one's a very important one. It establishes who is on your committee, where you're defending, the time you're defending and all that stuff. So it's mainly just setting up your appointment. Okay, so make sure you get that in 10 days before your defense. <laughs> okay, um, your title page. If you want it signed at your defense, you would want that um, sent in as well two weeks so we can just approve the format of it. Okay, um, and then you'll have your defense date. And, oh, it's a sad baby. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, you'll submit your record of examination. Your GPC actually fills this out for you and will submit it for you because students are not allowed to touch the record of exam. It's digital, so technically they can't touch it anymore. It used to be a paper. Um, but simply follow up with your GPC just to make sure that they have submitted that for you, all right? GPCs are people, <laughs> they're fallible. We're all people and we need reminders sometimes that we just need that kick in the butt to do something. That's what that's Eric and I do for each other. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's mainly what you have to do, okay? You have to just make sure you're on, on task, all right? So this is for those people that were asking. Um, one to two weeks after your defense, okay? Your format and style form. So I would be on, on top of that, all right? Um, and then you'll see we have your title page that will be approved and we'll send it out. And then authorship and copyright, the embargo, that's where it all will all kick off. So one to two um, weeks after your defense. And then um, kind of up to you when you submit your paper, if you take your gray semester, if you wanna be done as soon as possible, just depends on how tired or driven you are, <laughs> so. <laughs> 
And then you want the other one? Um, yeah, let's show the, um, the uh, doctoral candidate one as well. We'll make it bigger again. Registration requirements for the an active student. Um, gray semester. Um, that's just a gift for everyone. I don't think you have to have anything in place there. Um, sometimes international students have to register for USU 7777. So many numbers. I'm sorry. A lot of sevens. I think it's all seven. <laughs> Um, but that just states that you're still here in the country. So that's just a way for global engagement to track you. Um, I'm sorry if that's not like the crazy best answer. So 100% sure. The only difference on the doctoral one that we would send out for you is you guys actually um, fill out an ACDD form as opposed to a TPA form. You need to see anything else on here? No, we're good on that one. It's going to be the okay. same. Okay. You guys, I'm going to save a baby. Just one second. <laughs> Saving babies is important. Okay. Hello. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> This is my nephew. The grace semester is for all students, right, Erica? All students, not just the high school. Any other questions? Can we defend online? Okay, so. This is a good question. Good question. And, yeah, yeah, we've actually had to adjust that. So if you um, want to set up your defense, we are doing remote defenses right now. Okay, all of it, it's going to be like this format, right? It's going to be a web conference, a Zoom conference, but that is acceptable. You would probably be the one in the screen sharing mode, so that anything you want your uh, committee to see, you would be pushing out to everybody. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And I would say the same thing the, in terms of seeking librarian support from your liaison librarians or even me. If you need anything, we're, we're available for web conferencing, video conferencing, just like this. So, yeah. yeah. If you like, we, we're very, very understanding during the quarantine time. So, if you need to go back home, it'll be just fine. We're going to work with you. We're not going to. We're, we won't stop you from graduating. <laughs> we want we you, to want you to graduate. We just yeah, we we really like that. before we let you do that. <laughs> Megan, what is the EPA? I'll type in it to you. Oh, <laughs> that is EPA, Electronic Publication Approval Form. Oh, um, ETD. <laughs> get your. We gotta get our acronyms, <laughs> acronyms right. Okay, so um, Electronic Thesis dissertation form that has been combined with the format and style. Telling Digital Commons that you're okay with putting it over into the digital repository. Um, it used to be a form on its own. So we have updated that, okay? We've simplified the process for you. Yes, we have simplified the process. Less forms, less forms is so good. Um, we, it's going to take a little while. I did a test recording this morning and, um, it took a little while for me to have access to it as it was processing on the other side with WebEx. But, um, as soon as we have it, we certainly will. Um, and if for some reason that fails, Eric and I will get together and record another one. I will talk a lot again. <laughs> um, is the checklist? No, you don't need to submit the checklist. That's just there for you, just as like a help. It's 
it's just something we've made. The checklist, yeah, I think is a way to help guide your process through the semester. Yeah, yeah. Um, GPC submit application. Uh, yes, I believe that the GPC has been initiating them. Ooh, that's a good question. So, <laughs> let's take this back. Some departments have a specific template in place. Um, I know computer science has one on their website, okay, but not everyone has a template. We don't have one as a university. Um, there's another department. Isn't it there's engineering a or something? What was that? Wasn't it engineering or something? Yeah, so some departments have the LaTeX template, some don't, but we don't have one as, as, a, as a university. Um, mainly what LaTeX is, is it's a program where you, <laughs> sorry, he just whacked his head. <laughs> Save the job. Um, <laughs> um, LaTeX uh, is where you would input the information um, and then it actually produces APA formatting. So it's like a program that APA formats your paper for you. You could just do APA. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> oh, that's good information. ECE has one. Yes, the tech can be mainly what I've seen on campus is uh, it's APA that it should He has one, y'all. You guys know more than we do about this. <laughs> the tech is so pretty. It's just it very is. complicated. Makes really pretty papers. Um. If we can, we'll probably just send out a link and an email, and then um, at some point we'll probably put one either on a library resource, like a library guide, or in digital commons somewhere as well. We could put it on the grad school website as well. Too. Yeah, but we're, we this this is a new part of the process for us. I think I am going to check on that for you, Leslie, because that's not not uh, good. I'm going to check on that today for you, okay? Um, as far as international students, that's going to be through the Office of Global Engagement. All right, so you're going to have to work with them to make sure that your visa and all of that's still in place, all right? Um, I can't definitively say for you. <laughs> I don't want no, to. No, unfortunately not. curriculum visa um we include your publications um your research history usually put people will put um education things like that yeah, conferences they've been to all right it, it they vary a little bit i will i will speak to that for sure they do vary um if you're looking for having a good conversation about that you might just talk to your advisor and see what they would recommend for your field because there's some variance based on how you, um, what you prioritize in them based on where you are in your career too. Uh -huh. oh, I mean, I was just concerned about whether the my publication should be in the beta or my publication should be in the references section. I would, I would actually put it in both. Uh, yeah, especially okay. if you're citing it. <laughs> okay. Um, your paper for citation your beta for um, telling people how cool you are. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Promoting yourself. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. <laughs> this okay. recording will be linked. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on getting it onto the um, USU website, uh, at least probably either, if not today, tomorrow. I don't know, Shannon, with this recording, we'll see how it looks. So. We'll see, yeah, and we'll see how long it takes. Uh, I would say um, next week we'll definitely have you one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
some of that is beyond our control at this point. <laughs> It took me five minutes to log in here, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it took a couple hours for a two-minute recording to generate for me, so yeah. Any other questions, y'all, that we can help you out with? I know that there's some cheap. Well, thank you so much for everybody being really flexible to join in this format. Yeah. That was a trial for everybody. Oh. <laughs> I think it went okay. You're welcome. Yeah, you guys have a great day, okay? Absolutely. Take care of yourselves. Oh, great information. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good one. <laughs> you too.